In today's show, I'm talking about some of the key announcements from Microsoft Ignite for the Power Platform. Both the good, the ones that I think might break some stuff, and then finally we're going to put it all in context. We're not going to go through features as much as we're going to try to make sure this all makes sense to you. But first, here's our intro. Hi, my name is Shane Young with Power Apps 911. Those guys. And today, we're going to dive into the Ignite announcements and how they pertain to Power Platform, right? And we're not going to try to cover them all. This isn't a complete recap video. These are the ones that I think are important and why I think they're important or why you should pay attention to them. Heck, one of the announcements is even from the SharePoint team because I think that one of their announcements is going to affect some of the stuff that we do. So I want to get out ahead of that. So this is just the same content I'm pushing to my team of consultants here at Power Apps 911. I thought you guys would enjoy. So hopefully you do. Maybe you don't. I don't know. I also used PowerPoint, so no hating on PowerPoint because I hate PowerPoint, but I thought it was the best way to convey this message. So anyway, let's switch over to my desktop and take a look. Okay, so over here we've got the agenda. And keep in mind that there are timestamps in the description, so if you want to jump to a specific one, have at it, right? But what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the new ways to packaging apps, pay-as-you-go licensing, co-authoring, some developer boring stuff, bleh, but I'm going to at least point out because I think it matters. Um, a Microsoft Access Connector. I don't know if that was good or bad, so it's kind of indifferent there. The SharePoint URL change and how I think that might break some stuff for us. Start screen, not technically part of Ignite, but something also that rolled out recently that's causing a lot of confusion. And then there at the end, we're going to talk about some of my thinking points. I'm going to put two things into context with you so as you guys are thinking about what is the you know, rest of this year, what does next year look like, like you've got some perspective. So the first one here is that Microsoft is going to start rolling out the ability to package and share apps. So whether this is using something like mobile device management where you want to, you know, or Intune, right, where you're trying to kind of push things, I guess that's Intune, it's Endpoint Manager, or whatever. There's Microsoft platforms for empowering stuff so you can actually package up this, your app as a standalone app and push that out so people don't have to like go to Power Apps app, open it up, drill in, like, and think so much. They can just click on this app you deploy. So they're going to do that. They're going to be able to push it into private stores. Heck, they're even talking about pushing it into the real stores. I, I, I wait to see what happens there, right? This is things that they are working towards or that, you know, some of these portions are in preview, like the uh, endpoint pieces. But this could change some of the ways as we start to think about app distribution, especially in larger companies or companies where you're managing devices. Having more capabilities here will be nice. But it doesn't, hopefully it's not going to change anything for us for building the apps, but it's something to look out for. Licensing flexibility. So they've announced a new pay-as-you-go plan. So this is a big hit, I think, for customers who have variable usage, right? Like one of the uh, education groups that we work with, they're building these apps for their customers to order services from them. And so instead of them having to buy one license for everyone that could ever possibly use it, if they go to pay as you go, then they'll be able to say, hey, we've got pay as you go. And the month, like the month before school starts, when it's super busy, yep, they're gonna have a big bill. But, you know, October when no one's ordering anything, they're going to have a tiny bill. So, that, you know, because they'll have that variable usage for these premium apps, they want to be able to better control the licensing. So I'm kind of excited. I've, I've got several customers personally I think it's going to unlock some scenarios for. If you're still a customer who has a fixed, this is what we want to do, and these are the people that are going to use the app, the, you know, per user or per app plans are probably still going to make sense. But those variable ones where you're just trying to get in there and you don't know what the uses are going to be, pay as you go is going to make that interesting. Co-authoring. Oh, speaking of my team of almost 20 consultants these days, right? This is a great one for us because what Microsoft is going to start working towards is the ability to have two people in the same app at the same time making changes. Like if you remember the early days of Microsoft Office when that was there and you kind of had to hit refresh to see the changes that the person was making, that's the experience they're going to lead with here as they probably continue to refine it. They're also going to let us put comments in there. So I'll be able to go in and be like, hey, Daniel, you know, and at tagging, go fix this. Or, hey, Allison, incorporate your Power BI reports here. So this is going to be really nice, especially for those of you that aren't solo builders or working in a group. I'm excited for this because this is going to feel a lot like Microsoft Office. So on the dev side, there's a couple things. One of them is that Power Platform or, uh, yeah, Power Platform will now show up in the Azure portal for Azure API management. So if they've built something in Azure API endpoint and they want to automatically generate that as a connector, that's going to show up here. 
Not something that most of us are going to do, but what I really like about this is this is more eyeballs on the platform for us, right? More people in Azure API going, oh yeah, I could just integrate with Power Platform. More people in the ecosystem, the better for all of us. So kind of excited about that. If you got Devi friends, make sure they understand that's coming. Speaking of Devi friends, also they can use GitHub and they can do GitHub-y. I don't know, they talk about branches and merging. I'm not a developer either. I don't care. But if you are a developer, GitHub has got some, you know, going to be able to let you like edit apps with like Visual Studio Code, which we can already kind of do in preview today, but start to have that in GitHub repositories, pull code in. Once again, a bunch of Devi stuff that I'm not qualified for, but excites me for the platform as a whole. Now here's another one I said. This one, I don't know if this is good or bad, um, but I didn't see a uh, Ignite session, but I found it on their blog, the Microsoft Access Connector. And so I had to go like dig in. I did see it on Ignite too. But so I had to dig in a little bit to understand how this is going to work. But if you've ever used Access, like, you know, back in the 90s where we all started with Access, yikes. Yes, that's right. I'm old enough to guys working in the 90s. I'm old. Get over it. But in the, uh, one of the things that we've had for the last few years in Access is this concept of linked tables. So we could link up to a SharePoint table or a SQL table. And so we're still using the Access as a front end, but it was interacting with data in a more traditional database like SQL or a not database that uses a database, aka SharePoint. So what they've done now is they've said, hey, we're going to go one step further, and now you're going to be able to do linked tables with Dataverse. So then the idea here is I can take my access, they've got a whole wizard to pull the data out, put it in Dataverse for me, and connect those up as linked tables in the access. But then now that it's the data is in Dataverse and access is editing the data in Dataverse, I can build a Power App or a Power BI or a Power Automate Flow, right? I can connect to that Dataverse repository like we do already today and get that rich integration. So now people are working on it from Access and from Power Apps all in the same way. I think this is going to open a lot of doors. Access hurt me as a child, so I'm still afraid of it, but I think this is a pretty cool one. And I look forward to making some demo content on this in the future. All right, things that I totally know are going to break. So a lot of us, when we built our Office 365 tenants originally, we had, um, you know, we did something dumb, like named their domain Shane's Cows, right? Shane'sCows.SharePoint.com. Eh, it'd probably be nice if I could rename that to something a little more, you know, Power Apps 911 maybe? Something a little more business appropriate now that we're a larger company. So in order to do that, Microsoft is finally rolling out the ability to do that. It's in preview, so you only, only certain tenants can use it, blah, 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 I don't care. But what I wanted to call out for you guys, if you are in an environment where that gets done, it's probably going to, you know, Microsoft's calling out right here in the documentation a couple of things that it breaks with Power Automate and Power BI. And honestly, I expect it's going to break more things. So just be cognizant of that. If you're like someone building apps and you're like, hey, IT said they're going to rename the domain next week. Your ears should perk up and you should be like, hmm, how's that going to break all my stuff? Because I, I do think it's going to cause us some, some headaches. And speaking of headaches, um, Microsoft also rolled out a couple weeks ago this new start screen feature, which is a great feature moving us forward into a more declarative world. It has a lot of pros, but if you're doing things with deep linking today in your Power App, or you just plan to roll out deep linking now, it changes the story a little bit. And so with that change, you know, you guys might want to go check out this video and just look at it. We're getting a lot of help desk requests around, hey, this new feature is causing havoc. So if you haven't caused you havoc, yay you. But if you run into havoc, know there's a resource out there. All right, so that's features. Two things to think about. As I was watching Ignite this week and reading all their announcements, you know, Teams and Power Platform is continually repeated, right? All the time. So just keep that in mind, right? Are you doing enough with Teams today? Yeah, I know that you're in Teams for all your meetings and your calls, but are you building your apps to connect to Teams? Do you have flows that are connecting to Teams? Are you embracing Teams as an actual platform? So I'll put a link to a video somewhere up there um, that talk a little bit about this, but I want you guys to be thinking about that. Like when you send email notifications today, could you be sending Teams chats? Teams and Power Platform integration is only going to continue to grow. So the sooner you embrace it and start incorporating it in your apps, the better off you're going to be. Last but not least, this is one I keep telling my team. I want to remind you, right? I've been building Power Apps for four or five, a thousand years at this point. Like it's easy for me to think, oh yeah, everybody knows about Power Apps. On the curve, right? And this is my drawing. I know it's impressive. Um, 
you know, on the curve of this Bezian, right, the growth, whatever you call this thing, the adoption curve, I think is what we call it, we are still super duper early. So please remember that. Just because you've been doing this for years, there's still way more people that are not doing it. The tech is still growing. So be continue to be excited, continue to learn, continue to invest. We got a long way to go here. So, you know, you're in the right place at the right time. So high five. And last but not least, a couple fun little points. So over on the left was a picture of Martin's laptop uh, from a keynote. That's right, Satya introduced this image. And look at that, there is Chewy on his sticker. I like that. Thank you, Martin, for that. And then I was in the live studio audience, I think with my eyes closed in that image. So I just thought it was kind of a little fun things to show. So that's what I got for today. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Hopefully you found it helpful. I don't, this is the first time I've ever done this in, you know, 200 videos. So not usually a thing I do, but I thought this was a great format just to get this info out in front of you guys. Questions, comments, ideas, content you want to see me go deeper in, leave it below. Always happy to look for new inspiration and videos. Yeah, and with that, I'm going to say thanks and have a great day. Before you go, be sure to click on the subscribe button over here so that way you'll be notified when new videos come out. If you need any help or you want to work together, whether your problem is big or small, check us out at Power Apps 911. We do it all. I rhymed. Or if you're looking for more formal training offerings, we have those linked up here somewhere. So check them out. Thanks and have a great day.